Welcome everyone to another Observability Clinic Dynatrace Business Events Ingest, leveling up business events capturing, parsing, storage, and metric extraction. I'm back here with Klaus. Servus, Klaus. Servus, Andy. Hey, thank you so much for doing the next session on business events because we did one a couple of weeks ago. And uh, this is a follow-up because there's so many things that people are asking about business events. And um, before we get started, Klaus, let's do a, rec a quick recap of what we learned last time. Because last time, at least what I remember, and folks, if you want to see the whole session, the link to the recording will be in the description. So if you want to watch the first one, either type in what you see here or the link, you will also find it in the description. But Klaus showed us what business events actually are. Uh, he, he actually used uh, Easy Trade, a new app that we're using to demo all these use cases. And I'm pretty sure Easy Trade will be back today. How you can actually capture business events because there's different ways how to capture them. And then you also highlight a couple of uh, analytics use cases. But I actually want to know what else is there. And uh, this is where I'm really interested to see what you have prepared for us today, Klaus. Yeah, let me let me tell you a little bit about it. Let's use this uh, nice infographic here to talk about it. Today, the focus will be on everything that happens till you store the data in Grail. Uh, so we're not going into the, uh, the details of analytics. So what are we going to take a look at? How can I capture a PC event uh, via the real user agent? Mm -hmm. The other thing, what can I do during uh, the, uh, the ingest of the data? What can I do in the ingest pipeline? Which processing steps do I have there? What can I leverage them for? And uh, we are also taking a look at uh, why and how to create a metric out of uh, the event stream that is coming in here. Mm -hmm. I hope that's uh, a good uh, package. Oh, I forgot about it almost mm -hmm. like, yeah. Sometimes you want to change the retention time and mm -hmm. keep stuff a little bit longer. That's uh, what we are also going to cover here. Mm -hmm. Now that's really cool. And I remember Klaus last time, uh, we you also showed like the one agent right on the, on the backend, on the server side. You can obviously use the one agent to uh, capture business events from your... Uh, HTTP uh, requests and also responses. You can capture it on the server side. So there's a lot of cool things we can do. I'm really excited that you are focusing on the real user agent today because many of our users have business critic labs that start on the front end, like you know a browser. And uh, it's great that we can also send uh, business events from there. So yeah, excited. Yeah. So let's uh, finish here with uh, slides and uh, go right away into uh, our UI. Last time we ended up with uh, mm -hmm. this dashboard here with the trading volume on there. And you see, uh, hasn't changed a whole lot, but uh, I have added here a couple of links that allow us to uh, to work with data. You spoke about Easy Trade, and mm -hmm. Easy Trade uh, is uh, the app uh, is a web app uh, that is producing all the business business events where we are capturing from the server side. But there are a couple of reasons why you potentially want to instrument uh, within your website uh, additional information and send it over as a business event. May it be third party uh, information like, a, uh, like the uh, web analytics tools, Google and Adobe, uh, the, the data there, you have a data layer object that you want to send in. And it is pretty convenient uh, to do that. And I'll show you how the API we have provided here an API, what that looks like. So we have here uh, an event uh, where we can send in any data, an API that produces uh, an event that uh, takes any data. The first parameter is mandatory. That's going to turn into the event type. Mm -hmm. So we put in here a string. And then there is only a second parameter. And the second parameter is a JSON object. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this JSON object, so I put it in there, uh, the presenter one and two. And uh, wherever in the context of your, um, of your web application, you're triggering this API call, you will be uh, sending immediately off a PC event. Mm -hmm. So this is not bound to a user action being there. Uh, like some other uh, API calls from our RAM agent, but 
as long as the rum agent is there, you can send it off at any point in time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we're doing this right here again. And I'll copy this uh, event type here so we can see what this looks like actually in, in reality. So mm -hmm. let me jump in here and uh, filter uh, for the event type uh, that we have set here, the performance clinic. Okay, there is a small mm -hmm. type in here. Let's see. So automatically, I mean, you see, I did it earlier today already, mm -hmm. but uh, immediately coming in, uh, the event, that's the one that we just produced. Uh, and what happens is that it automatically gets enriched. So, for example, we know which application it's originating from. Remember, as long as you are using our agent, the business event is always in context, automatically part of SmartScape. Mm -hmm. Also, automatically, we are enriching uh, key information like which browser was it? Was it a which browser type? What was the user agent string? That kind of information that you're used to uh, from a real user monitoring perspective is automatically added here. I'm running here on Windows machine, mm -hmm. but we also have here the presenters. Plus, we have here uh, our topic uh, that is about sending a business event from a real user agent. Hey, Klaus, just a quick recap. For people that might be new to this, if you switch over to the Easy Trade app again, so this is your business critical app. In your case, it's Easy Trade. It's a sample app that we have. It runs on an infrastructure that is already monitored with Dynatrace. Therefore, you automatically get the Dynatrace real user monitoring agent injected, which gives you that Dynatrace JavaScript object that your developers can use. And you, in your case, showed it through the console. So you can just make calls to the Dynatrace real user agent and now send also business events and a business event is always an event type and then any type of json so you can put in any type of data and as you're sending it over it will get enriched with more data that we know about what app it is what browser um where what's the user agent string and all this stuff so we enrich it with more information and the nice thing is this can this will be i remember from from last uh, clinic uh, this will always be sent and always be captured, guaranteed, because this is also the magic with business events. There's no sampling. There's no nothing. You had a 100% capture rate. That's also very important. Uh, thanks for bringing up the accuracy topic again, uh, because uh, real user uh, monitoring has its challenges. So uh, this guarantee, uh, as long as the JavaScript is being executed, yes, we are sending it over. Mm -hmm. But be aware that due to GDPR cookie policies uh, or ad blockers, the JavaScript may not run. Mm -hmm. We have seen their discrepancy. So we've seen their discrepancy. If you really need the 100% accurate uh, data uh, and you want to get there, then you want to take a look at the uh, backend or one agent capturing mm -hmm. because that's where we can deliver higher accuracy. We've okay. seen customers uh, that you end up somewhere between uh, 80 and 90 percent mm -hmm. accuracy uh, if if the Dynatrace RAM agent is part of uh, the GDPR rules as a technical necessity. If it's part of uh, marketing mm -hmm. uh, cookies, for example, then you will end up with uh, somewhere in the 50, 60 percent. Mm -hmm. sure. But it's also great that we can capture everything on the server side, which we showed last time. Everything, every single request that enters your web servers, your app servers, we can capture it with the full request oh. headers and re and body and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. So that's it. Uh, you have this uh, capability not only for web, but it's uh, demoing. Uh, it demos way easier on 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 web than mm -hmm. on mobile. But remember, for uh, RAM, we also have our mobile agents. And uh, for Android, uh, iOS, we have the respective uh, Java, sorry, the respective API calls available uh, within the packages there as well. Same uh, system, same limits uh, apply there. Mm -hmm.
So let's come back to our uh, overview here uh, to our dashboard. Last time we have created uh, this uh, bar chart here and this bar chart we uh, produced by uh, reading uh, the BIS events, the buy and the sell assets. Again, from easy trade, we capture it with one agent on the web server tier. And uh, these two, uh, these two uh, event types have uh, have fields on there because from the request we could capture the amount and the price. Mm -hmm. And what we did last time is we basically said like, hey, we have that data. It got captured that way, and we then uh, turned it into training volume. Now, it's nice uh, that we can do that, but when you think about providing this information to others, uh, maybe a little bit less versed people in the QL, that do not think about, hey, I could do this multiplication here. Wouldn't it be nice if we would have the trading volume as a attribute on the uh, on the, on the events themselves? Mm -hmm. Let me show you uh, how we can get that done. Because what we can do is uh, we can jump in, and during uh, the processing, during the the data comes uh, comes uh, flies into the Dynatrace server uh, through the pipeline, we can change their the processing. Mm -hmm. So what we can do here is we are adding a new processing rule. We're calling it adds trading volume uh, to buy asset. Mm -hmm. And I have here already a little bit of a cheat sheet. The first thing that we have to define is a matcher rule in order for you not to watch me typing too much. I'll, I'll just copy it over. What does this matcher rule do? So basically an event flows in. The event uh, has a certain event type. In our case, it was the buy asset. And uh, we also said we want to do it for uh, the sell asset. The difference is pretty uh, for example, we just add this. And that way, we basically identify uh, the events that we want to transform. Mm -hmm. Now we need to know what are we changing. And in order to do our transformation, we need uh, the, the value from the amount. Mm -hmm. We don't want to change the amount, so we leave it here as a read only. And the second piece that, uh, that we uh, also want to have is uh, the price, which are the two attributes that we want to work on. We also don't want to change that one, mm -hmm. but uh, we leave those two values as is. They should uh, be stored as, as that. Now it's uh, about time to do the, process, uh, the processor definition. Jumping back here. And similar to our DQL command that we had, we're doing here uh, in, that we had for on read, we're doing here something slightly adjusted, but we're doing here again, a fields add. We provide the name of the field and what we are doing is we're doing the price by the amount. And that's the uh, transformation rule that uh, will be applied. Going back here, I've prepared a, a sample of what it looks like. Uh, and I'll put in here uh, the buy asset that has the amount, that has, that has the price, and yeah, the field called total. And I can now test my rule and see what results will I get. That's awesome. Wow. Uh, and this is, this, is, this, this is the beauty now. I have here my trading volume. And this gets now stored. So everybody who sees the event, who does a fetch this event, filter on a buy or sell asset, sees the other trade right away. So Klaus, again, recapping for me to confirm that I understand this correctly. In the last clinic, you basically crafted the DQL, a Dynatrix query language, where you were on read saying, I'm interested in all of the events that are coming in and I'm extracting data on read to calculate the total amount. 
-hmm. Now what you're showing me is that we also have ingest rules. That means as data is getting sent to Dynatrace, we have an ingest pipeline where we can execute mm -hmm. these rules and that basically automatically changes the business event by adding more fields, by doing calculations. So this is basically not on read anymore, but it's during ingest, we're enriching it so that you will make it easier then for everyone to just use the trading volume as a field and no longer having to craft your own query with the manipulation in the query itself. Right. Cool. So this is this is one use case. Another use case um, I've prepared here is what happens if you are having there uh, within the payload a, a field that you want to mask. Oh, mm -hmm. So, like on purpose, Easy Trade captures the CDB mm -hmm. uh, from your credit card, and uh, with the deposit money event, same thing. We know that we are going to have this uh, this field in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we are capturing it, and what we are doing here is a processor definition where we say mm -hmm. fields at the CVV, but what we are doing is we are actually transforming it. We are hashing it. Yeah. So we don't have the clear text of the CVV uh, capture. And that means fields add on the same field will override the original field value. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So again, test rule. Let's run the test rule here. We have, we have two, three, four, mm -hmm. which turns into this yep. unbeatable long hash. Mm -hmm. So this is this is something cool. Uh, this these are just two examples of a lot of things that you can do with those uh, process and step definitions. Mm -hmm. uh, really like it a lot. Makes your life easier uh, in, in a lot of in a lot of uh, uh, occasions. Mm -hmm. I want to save here uh, our changes because I want to come back to the trading volume. And uh, with the trading volume, we want to do something on read as well. Uh, we want to create a metric. Why would we want to create a metric when we can do everything on read? Uh, for a very simple reason, because we may want to hand it over to Davis. We want to have a seasonal baseline from Davis. Huh. And we want to alert on it. That's kind of reasons why we, why we want to uh, create uh, a metric. So what you see we have here already a few. I've prepared one, the trading volume, all the way to the bottom. Uh, what we have to have is uh, this key. The key is what we can use later on in the data explorer uh, the, uh, to, to see what's, uh, what, the, what the metric looks like. And all we do in this rule is that we look for buy asset whenever we are seeing an event that matches uh, this buy asset. We are going into an attribute and we're using now the trading volume that we just created uh, to create a metric out of it. Mm -hmm. And in our case, we don't have to add uh, dimensions. We could add dimensions so everything that is on the event can uh, can be a, a dimension. We could put in here uh, the account ID, which is captured with the buy and the sell asset, for example. Mm -hmm. We could put that uh, we put that in here. Mm -hmm. This card here, uh, the changes you already saw the opening in here. Our data explorer. If I throw in here the trading volume, I pick it. I run my query. I'll get automatically my trading volume metric. And I can work with. Mm -hmm. As I have this metric, I have all the beautiful uh, mm -hmm. uh, mechanisms to analyze, to put it on a dashboard and chart it there. That's all uh, good things uh, that you can do with metrics. Don't want to go into the details here, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. I'm jumping back to uh, the metric extraction and what else can I do with it? I, right underneath, we have the anomaly detection. What we want to do now is we also want to alert uh, in case 
the trading volume is not uh, not where it should be. So we're adding here a metric event. It is trading volume out of band. So it's out of band. We are looking for the metric selector. We have here uh, our key that we used before. We don't want to apply a management suit in our case here. And we don't want to do a st static threshold. We want to leverage Davis uh, seasonal baseline. here. And for sure, if trading volume is not there, we also want to alert. We want to alert not only if uh, trading volume is above or below, but uh, as soon as it is outside of the corridor, we potentially have there a reason to wake up uh, people. And uh, last but not least, we give it a good uh, title. Andy and Klaus having fun with alerts. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, and we can define what type of, uh, of, of, of uh, alert it is. Mm -hmm. Do we want to have here an availability issue because of that? We allow it to merge with other uh, Davis to merge it. Mm -hmm. We are done with all our settings. Mm -hmm. Save once we save it, we basically have now this Davis watching the trading volume that we just created mm -hmm. that we created a metric for. Now, Davis will let us know if uh, it is outside of the expected norm. Mm -hmm. That's yes. it's really powerful. And especially if you think about the whole use case now, what you showed us, friend, you showed us that we can ingest business events either on the front end, RAM, or on the back end. We can take this raw data, we can then transform it on ingest and create additional fields, like in your case, the total value, the total balance, or the total amount. Uh, we can then use this to chart. I, I immediately thought about SLOs, obviously, right? Because that's a big topic for me. Um, and you can use any metric now for alerting as well, but not only for static alerting, but Davis has the seasonal baselining. And you can just say, hey, I want to get alerted in case my trading volume goes out of seasonal baselining. And, and that's just phenomenal. And everything very, very simple and very easy. Yeah. Talking about SLOs mm -hmm. uh, just inspired me. Mm -hmm. uh, for this, uh, you see up here this this rule here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like it's about payment errors. Yeah, what we're doing here is we are counting the payment errors and we're creating their uh, things. Let me copy that metric selector because yeah. uh, in a different uh, session we uh, used it uh, to create here an SMO. Oh, that's awesome! So looking at uh, payment errors. Derived. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and Klaus, this also reminded me, and I know we have a, uh, some hints later on as we close this out to some of the sessions that happened at Perform where customers talked about how they're using business events and capturing payment order process information is just phenomenal, right? You can capture yeah. order information on every stage of the order and the payments and then defining SLOs uh, is now, uh, that's, that's great, yeah. We exactly. Go. But we remember my initial slide. We said uh, we are talking about stuff uh, ahead of storing mm -hmm. data. We're not talking, yeah. diving into the analytics. Yeah. Let's uh, get back on track here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we have uh, one last thing that we uh, that, uh, that I want to show you. During the ingest of the, uh, of the data, you can also define how long you want to store it. Mm -hmm. And let's say for a compliance reason, we may want to store the data for uh, three years. And uh, a very beautiful thing there, if you look at the busy events on this environment that are coming in, we have there multiple different event providers. Mm -hmm. We have there our easy travel, our easy trade, SME uh, company, uh, our Salesforce uh, integration, uh, mm -hmm. definitely a topic for another mm -hmm. clinic. But uh, let's uh, see, uh, let's assume for uh, the SME.com uh, uh, page for compliance reasons, 
uh, we're doing there something where we have to store the data, let's say for three years. Now, how can we achieve that? We can achieve that by, uh, yeah, defining during uh, ingest uh, the bucket assignment. A bucket has a certain uh, limit on how long it stores the data. And uh, we want to create here a rule and assign to one of the buckets, <clears throat> uh, yeah, the data. Mm -hmm. So our rule is ask me, oops, ask me, uh, compliance uh, three years. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the rules name. And we want to store the data in one of these buckets. Obviously for us, it's three years. We can pick between default is 35 days, one year or three year. Or if you don't want to store it because you say like the metric that you've created before is sufficient, mm -hmm. you can drop the data and send basically oh. uh, the event to not be stored. Cool. We're doing here a three year uh, retention. And again, we are writing here uh, a metro rule uh, and in this case, uh, we want to match the event dot provider uh, to be mm -hmm. this here. And as soon as we save it, mm -hmm. the data uh, gets stored in the bucket, in the three-year uh, bucket. Cool. And uh, and and Klaus, as I see here, the other examples. That means you have a full matcher. That means you can not only do this on event provider, I guess you can also do this on individual events. Right. Event type, anything yeah. that is on the events that you can use to match in there is like, and you can divide up. So like uh, if it is the event provider, ask me and only the mm -hmm. um, uh, event type, the payment uh, event type, for example, it would uh, just uh, be more fine grained with your matcher rule. Awesome. Wow. Once you once you once you have that, I have uh, prepared another uh, query here for you oh. mm -hmm. uh, because not everybody knows, but you can use in those buckets uh, also in your queries. So in this case, uh, we'll see like all the events that are coming in, mm -hmm. these are our buckets. So the long is the three-year bucket. Mm -hmm. and if I take that one, if I just uh, filter on DT system, system dot bucket. Now you see me again typing queries. Mm -hmm. The reason why I have everything prepared, I can take a look at the uh, the stuff that is uh, mm -hmm. on me. And we see uh, already our com ask me order canceled events mm -hmm. uh, coming in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. I think that's the next level of this event. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think we are not done yet. No. Exactly. We have to do another, we have to meet for another session. Uh, definitely, definitely. And Klaus, I know we wanted to highlight uh, a couple of additional assets we have. If you want to move to the next slide. Yeah, you did a great session at Perform with uh, Mark Forrester from Mitchells and Butlers. Folks, you can get this one through the on-demand. Uh, there's a direct link that you will also see in the description of this video. So you can either find it by name, obviously, but we will also post the link in the description. Um, maybe Klaus, just like one or two sentences on what Mark showed there. Uh, Mark was one of the very, very early adopters of the business event capability and also of our new platform UI and the capabilities there. Mm -hmm. uh, one example that he brings up is uh, how he is capturing uh, actually the tips that the waiters are getting. Mm -hmm. uh, He's capturing it with this events and how he, he is every week uh, transferring over that information to the finance team using wow. our workflow engine. 
outra uh, resource. Uh, to yeah. distribute it there. Okay. That's just one example of, of, of what he's doing. It's like mm -hmm. great stuff. Take mm -hmm. a look at it. Mm -hmm. Got this morning another email from him saying like, hey, these are the other use cases are like, yeah, we need to work on these use cases to get it uh, over here to you to performance clinic or other things as well. This yeah. is really great resources. Cool. And there is, I think, one more reminder, folks, uh, for Perform, if in case you have not seen Perform, perform.dynatrace.com. You can watch the keynotes and the breakouts, just go to perform.dynatrace.com and it's all there on demand. And uh, I believe the last slide that we have some additional resources, blogs, documentation, university content, same thing. The links will also be part of the description in Klaus. With this, I think this is chapter number two, I would say, and there will be a chapter number three because I want to know more about, or at least I think you told me you want to then focus more on the analytics opportunities that we have. Exactly. How can you run, um, how can you set up something uh, like market it? Mm -hmm. how can you, I think I also want to share a couple of these use cases from our customers that we are seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, plenty of, of, of stuff for you in your performance clinics. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Klaus, with this, thank you so much. And hopefully everybody that watched this, uh, you learned something new. You got inspired about what's possible. Uh, try it out. Give us, especially Klaus, feedback because he's driving a lot of the innovation here. And uh, with this, Klaus, I say, tschüss, since Mufiatl. Fiat, Bye-bye.